Hey guys, Ms. Tucker here for our 10th and final uh, video in our biochemistry series. And uh, we're, today we're going to talk all about enzymes. Enzymes are very important in biological systems because they are the things that make everything possible. Enzymes make things happen um, at temperatures that allow organisms to, to stay together, basically. That's enzymes in a nutshell. Um, they're so important that we're going to spend all next week talking about enzymes and playing with enzymes and designing research experiments based on enzymes. So make sure you take plenty of notes um, So because if you have any questions, we can definitely uh, talk about them tomorrow in class. So the first thing that you need to know is that enzymes are what we call a catalyst, and catalysts make things happen. And enzymes are found in biological systems, so we like to call them biological catalysts. Enzymes are biological catalysts. Here's what that means. Suppose you have a reaction. Um, let's say, like, you want to make uh, a dipeptide, right? So we're going to write dipeptide. synthesis. Now you already know that uh, the chemical reaction that takes place between two amino acids to form a dipeptide is called a dehydration reaction. So let's say that in a system in a test tube without any enzyme in it, it's going to take this much energy So that's my, that's the amount of energy. It's gonna, I've gotta get, put this much energy into that test tube before I have my dipeptide. So my reactants in this case are two amino acids and then my product is a dipeptide. Does that make sense? I've got two individual amino acids and I'm putting them together and that's a chemical reaction. So my reactants then are the amino acids and the product is my dipeptide. I have a test tube without an enzyme, so this is line A, and I've got to put this much energy in to get those to form a bond, to get to be able to form a peptide bond. Enzymes are cool because they make it so that I don't need quite as much energy. I can have the exact same reaction between the exact same amino acids and the exact same product coming out at a much lower energy. So it's less energy input into the system, which means that it can happen faster. Um, in the case of temperature, things that are going to be needed, the heat need, be needed, to, be needed to heat up in order to form a bond. You can only get so hot before your body starts to suffer damage from that. So enzymes allow that same chemistry to take place at a much lower temperature. This energy required to get these two reactions or two amino acids to start forming this bond, this energy is called the activation. Whoops. There we go. Uh, this energy is called the activation energy. That's the activation energy. And once a reaction gets to the point where it's an active, got the, uh, enough activation energy, it's going to go on its own. So we've just got to get it up to that point. It's kind of like pushing a ball uphill. We've just got to push the reaction up to the top of the hill. And once it gets up there, it's going to go um, continually on its own. So enzymes, enzymes lower the activation energy. That's how they work. Enzymes lower activation energy. And this is exactly how they do that. So we already know enzymes do what? That's right, you're paying attention. Enzymes lower the activation energy. Uh, and this is what, what we're looking at right now is the mechanism of enzyme activity. So the mechanism is basically how something works. Your mechanic, right, works on the parts of your car. So mechanism is how something works. Here's a new vocabulary word substrate and substrate is the stuff whatever it is is the stuff being worked on
So in our previous example, my two amino acids would have been the substrate. Um, but in this example, I've already got a dipeptide and this enzyme is actually going to break them apart. And what we do, uh, what we call that, to kind of, uh, it's a, a metaphor, um, is a lock and key. So it's the lock and key method. Here's why that's important. You'll notice that this substrate fits perfectly into that enzyme. Just like a lock holds the only key that will unlock it perfectly. You can put all sorts of keys in there, but there's only going to be one key that will open that lock. So that's why we call it the lock and key method. You could call it the hand and glove method if you wanted. I don't know. Um, you could call it the puzzle piece method. We call it the lock and key method. It seems to, you know, help teenagers remember that that's how enzymes work. So the lock and key is this idea that a substrate goes into an enzyme, the enzyme reacts on it somehow. In this case, it's going to break that bond. It's going to put stress on that bond and it's going to break. And then the products um, are going to be released from the enzyme. And so enzymes basically work to build things and they work to break them apart. Pretty straightforward. Now, enzymes themselves are proteins. And you already know that the thing that is holding most proteins together are hydrogen bonds. So how do I mess up with hydrogen bonds? If I want to decrease um, or increase, as a matter of fact, enzyme activity, um, there's a couple of different ways that I can do that. Um, and one is temperature. So you'll look over here. Here's my rate of enzyme activity and temperature. And so it can, you know, down here it starts to increase when it's really cold, but then there comes a point where it's going to reach its optimal temperature. And every enzyme is different. Every enzyme is going to have an optimal temperature. A lot of your enzymes are probably going to prefer to work at body temperature, which is about 98.6. And that means that they are interacting as quickly as they possibly can. Here's the trouble, though. Once that I get over that optimal temperature, look how quickly this decreases. What's happening? That enzyme is actually denaturing. That's right. The heat is destroying the actual enzyme shape itself and it's going to cause that enzyme to unfold and thus it's no longer going to fit its substrate and it's no longer going to work. So I can increase the temperature up to a certain point if I want to increase enzyme activity. After that optimum temperature it's going to start to break apart. pH is a little bit different. I could say that you know this is a digestive enzyme so this might be pH of zero and this might be a pH of four and your stomach di juices really like to digest a pH of 2. That's going to be my optimum temperature. Or, sorry, excuse me, pH. But if I go one way or the other too much, I'm going to start disrupting those hydrogen bonds. You guessed it, the enzyme's going to fall apart and it's no longer going to fit its uh, substrate and then it's not going to work. I can also do a couple of other things. If I want to uh, increase or decrease the rate of enzyme function, I can change the amount of enzyme or you know because that'll make it go faster or slower it doesn't take very much it only takes a little bitty amount because enzymes work really fast but if I change decrease the amount of enzyme or increase it then I can change the rate I can also uh, change the amount of substrate so if I put more in there, it'll react faster. So those are just some different ways that I can um, change or affect the rate of enzyme function. And here's a cool little animation of how enzymes work a little bit. So we've got this structure. So let's wait, 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 wait. Let's go back and look at that. So if we go back over here, you'll see that this is just looking like those ribbons technology. Ah! It's killing me. So you'll see that that is just representing a protein that you've already seen. So see that? And then they're just kind of putting this like clumpy stage on it so we look like a protein way far out. But these green things are my substrates. The gold things are the enzymes. And it's just showing how quickly those enzymes can work. And this one is actually breaking that apart. 
Here's another one where they're digesting those individual molecules. Here's another one where they're linking and polymerizing this particular molecule. So these are just different animations of how enzymes do their thing. Pretty straightforward. You can watch, go back and watch that as many times um, as you would like to. Just, you know, rewind and fast forward. See all my computer issues. Okay, things to remember. You want to remember the word catalyst and how that applies to enzymes. You want to remember what a substrate is and want to be able to identify an enzyme and a substrate. Uh, mechanism, how do enzymes work? How do they do their jobs? What are the four ways, there are four, what are the four ways that we can affect the rate of enzyme function? And what happens, what does a denature mean? What, what, is, what does it mean when I denature something and how does that actually happen? If you guys have any questions, be sure to jot them down. Don't worry, we're gonna play with this all next week, so we're gonna be doing this for a while. Uh, but if you do have any questions or none of this is particularly clear, go ahead and jot them down. Don't forget to take the quiz, and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.